Oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, things are getting real and things are getting real right now. What we just had happen today, a bank has now officially collapsed. A massive, massive bank that's very, very important for the financial system and specifically some of the high growth tech sectors. They've announced they're going to be entering into liquidation. This has caused the markets to absolutely tank today and this is going to have flow-on effects throughout the whole financial system. So what bank was it that collapsed today? And this is something that I've been warning about. Well, that's exactly what we're going to go over in today's video, everyone, because what you have to know right now, like I've been warning about, we are in a financial crisis right now. But just like what happened in 2007, when we saw the signs or what was going to happen in 2008, many people ignored it. Many people thought it was just doom and gloom. Nothing was going to happen. But people, the signs are everywhere. It's time to wake up, pay attention, because we are only months away from another full-on financial crisis like 2008. So everyone, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. So the bank we are talking about today, everyone, is Silvergate. And Silvergate, this is not speculation anymore. This has now absolutely full-on collapsed. So Silvergate was established in 1988 in California, and the bank initially specialized in lending to industrial customers at the time and also offered loans for both residential and commercial real estate. In 2013, though, the bank began to court crypto firms when traditional banks were reluctant to do so due to the uh, risk <laughs> in the sector, and Silvergate thus became the crypto bank. In 2019, the firm made its IPO, promising a complete refocus on the industry, which is is then experiencing a renaissance as of September 30th, Silvergate had 11.9 billion in digital assets held in custody. And a crypto friendly bank was a vital cog in the industry ecosystem, serving as a fiat ramp for many businesses in the space. So, a traditional bank getting involved with cryptocurrency firms, what could possibly go wrong, everyone? Well, Pretty much everything went wrong. So the California bank Silvergate announced its failure on March 8th, confirming that its bet on cryptocurrency industry had turned into a nightmare. And that's going to cost investors dearly because they're going to lose everything. The company announced its intent to wind down operations and voluntarily liquidate the bank in an orderly manner well, they say orderly, but their stock's down uh, 96%. And in accordance with applicable regulatory processes, it said in a press release on March 8th. And people, they're trying to tell you, don't worry, don't panic. We're just going to do an orderly liquidation. This never works out well. And investors didn't buy it whatsoever. And their stock plummeted 44% today. But again, it is down 96% from its all-time high. The announcement made after the close on Wall Street was followed by Silvergate shares tumbling nearly 44% to $2.76 in after hours. Now, Silvergate has said they're going to try to repay depositors, but they said investors won't be getting their money back. And look at this, everyone. When this news was announced at uh, 1.50 uh, GMT time, uh, we can see Bitcoin absolutely collapsed. It went from around uh, 21700 and it dropped all the way to a low of uh, $20,077. Maybe thinking, look, this is to do with crypto. I don't care about crypto. I want to know what's going to happen to the traditional banks. Well, people get into a moment. We also saw the stocks for traditional banks absolutely tank today as well. So there's much more going on that's going to have flow and effects in the financial system with not just this, like I've been talking about commercial real estate with Blackstone defaulting on their commercial uh, real estate mortgage-backed securities. There's much, much more going on, which I'll get into in a moment. So also we found out the bank declared they had a $949 million loss in 2022 compared with a $76 million profit in 2021. So it lost nearly over a billion dollars. Silvergate was chartered under the supervision of the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, and in a statement it said it was keeping a close eye on the situation. So what caused Silvergate to collapse was pretty much a double whammy. One, there was a huge bear market, which caused a lot of its assets to absolutely plummet. And second, it had massive, massive loans with FTX and Sam Bankman Freed and Alameda Research. So when they went under, Silvergate took massive, massive losses that it could never recover from. But really what made the situation worse was when Coinbase announced it was cutting its ties with the bank. And this caused a domino effect for many other crypto firms to do the same. Coinbase was first to announce that it was severing ties with Silvergate, followed by the likes of Galaxy Digital, Circle, Paxos, Gemini, Crypto.com, and Bitstamp. Some went to great lengths to stress that they didn't have exposure to the bank. Well, people, 
is the crypto industry very trustworthy? Can we trust these big cryptocurrency firms? I wouldn't trust them with a 10-foot pole. So FTX demise has led customers to withdraw deposits worth around $8 billion from Silvergate, piling pressure on the bank at a time when trading volumes were already low. Now, analysts are divided on how much it will affect Bitcoin's price in the long term, but we can see short terms having a very, very big effect. But something that it is going to do is it's going to cut a key link with the traditional banking sector. Now, speaking on traditional banking sector, we have to talk about what happened with the stock market today and also what happened with banking stocks. So look at this, everyone. S&P 500 closes 1.8% lower as bank stocks succumb to pressure. So what pressure are they coming under, everyone? So not only the S&P was down 1.85%, but also the Dow lost over 500 points, down 1.66%, and the NASDAQ shed over 2%. And listen to this. This is very key, everyone, what we're in uh, in this market right now. Thursday's losses brought the Dow to close below its 200 100 moving day average for the first time since November 9th. Now, this is a very, very key level. If the market closes above the 200 day moving average for the first time uh, in recent months, well, that's bullish. But if it closes below its 200 day moving average for the first time in many months, that is bearish, everyone. But the losses pushed the SP 500 financial sector down. 4.1%. Listen to this, everyone. This is its worst day since June 2020. The financial bellwethers Bank of America and Wells Fargo also took a hit, tumbling more than 6% each. So it wasn't just Silvergate, everyone. All the traditional banks were down massive today. So what's going on? Do they have some ties to Silvergate? Is there something else going on in the background? We're seeing what's going to be happening with the Fed with their recent announcements. There could be a 50 basis point high coming. That means a lot of their assets on their books, like these mortgage-backed securities, these bonds, these commercial real estate, uh, even these residential loans, they're going to continue to fall and the banks could be underwater later this year. Because we got more data recently that's showing that the labor market is still very, very tight. This is going to give the Federal Reserve much more room to hike and also Wages are going up more than expected. Yes, they're not keeping up with inflation, but on an annualized basis, they went up 7.2%. So this is giving the Federal Reserve very big fears of what's called a wage price spiral. That's where prices go up, workers demand more wages, they get a pay rise, they can somewhat afford the higher prices, and this creates a vicious inflation cycle of companies doing price hikes and then workers demanding higher and higher wages, and then the cycle goes on. So everyone, I know where you're thinking, well, okay, well, what does all this financial jargon mean for you in simple terms? What this means, everyone, like I've been warning about, we now have an official traditional bank that has collapsed. This has caused huge, huge issues for the cryptocurrency sector. It's also causing issues for the traditional banking sector with with cryptocurrency down today, uh, banking stocks down today, and the worst is not over. There was a lot of optimism at the start of the year that the Federal Reserve won't have to lift interest rates anymore, that we're facing disinflation. Well, we got a rude shock, and no, we are far from disinflation. I think we're about to see inflation surge yet again, and we're going to have to go to interest rates that nobody will believe or nobody thinks possible of 6 or 7%, and then we're about to see massive delinquencies and massive defaults, and people's assets like cars, RVs, real estate is going to be sold for pennies on the dollar. But everyone, what do you think about all of this? Let me know down below. Now, from my law viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.